BYU Sports Nation is live for a special evening edition of the program. We're set to officially welcome a new era of BYU men's basketball and the Cougars' new head coach, Kevin Young. His introductory news conference will begin in just a few minutes alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us for such a monumental event in the history of BYU sports. We're going to hear from President Shane Reese, Athletic Director Tom Holm, of course, Kevin Young, the new head coach of the Cougars. Lots of uh, dignitaries in person. And now we go over to the Marriott Center with Tom Homel at the podium. Cougar Nation, it's a great day for our men's basketball program and athletic department. Today, I'm absolutely thrilled to formally welcome to Brigham Young University our new head men's basketball coach, Kevin Young. <laughs> to start things off, we are pleased to have the president of BYU, C. Shane Reese, here to address us. President. Cougar Nation, let's go! We are so thrilled to welcome all of you tonight to this dawning of a new era for BYU basketball. We are thrilled to welcome to the BYU family Kevin Young as the head men's basketball coach of BYU basketball. Thank you, Kevin, for being here. And I need to, I need to tell you, that we have had the opportunity to meet with his family, both his wife, Melissa, their children, his parents, his siblings, and we are welcoming to the Cougar family an incredible addition in their entire family. So we welcome all of you to the Cougar family. I also want to tell you that through our interview process, it became infinitely clear that we had our man for the job to head our next era of Cougar basketball. We have in Kevin Young an incredible family man who is dedicated to the family that he's developed, to their, to their development, to their part, being part of this Cougar family. We have in Kevin Young a man who is a humble, follower of Jesus Christ, and that is a beautiful thing in this era. And we have in Kevin Young an absolutely brilliant basketball mind who is going to take the Cougars to the next level. So with that, Kevin, Coach Young, we want to tell you how much we love you, how much we love you, Melissa how much we welcome the entire Young family to Brigham Young basketball. Go Cougs! Thank you, President Reese. It's now my pleasure to introduce Kevin Young. We had a variety of excellent candidates and a lot of interest in this position. We're blessed to be in a position right now of strength in our program. Kevin is not someone that just came to us out of the blue. We had our eye on him for quite a while. It has been remarkable to see all that he has accomplished at the NBA level. His character is impeccable. It is in incredible how well regarded he is by individuals all throughout college basketball and throughout the NBA. Kevin is a remarkable fit here at BYU. He understands what we're all about here at BYU. He's committed to doing the right thing. Having been on calls yesterday with him and our players, I'm so excited to witness the impact that he will have on these young men and how he can relate and build meaningful relationships with them. Let's take things to the next level. Cougar fans, it's time. Lights, lights. The Marriott Center tonight is right up there with the Texas Tech and the Kansas. The Marriott Center in Provo. And we got a good one. Full house here in Provo. Almost 18,000. BYU's threes has been the story of the game. I mean, BYU's been relentless. 
Just on the offensive glass. It, is, it was rocking in here. BYU has a very good basketball team. You know, they have a little bit of everything. They have shooters, they have scorers, they have bigs. Uh, a great history of basketball uh, at BYU. They're such a great addition to the Big 12. Textbook offensive basketball for 22. One of the most prolific offensive teams in the country. It comes down to having shot makers, and they've got plenty of them. This is an elite level scoring offense. You what? Cougar Nation, here he is, Kevin Young. Appreciate it, everyone. Oh, there we go, that's off to a good start. <laughs> Um, wow, this is exciting for me and my family. Just, uh, I don't know, when you're doing everything on the phone and you're, and you're, and you're not here to feel the energy and, and just feel this building, um, when you step foot in here, even my, my kids, um, that this place is going to be rocking. We're going to get this thing rolling. So um, excited to be here. I, I really want to first start by thanking a couple people, um, Brian, Tom, President Reese, Keith, um, that force, and when we met, um, it, was, it got clear pretty quickly um, that this was going to be something that me and my wife were going to have to make uh, an amazing decision to join, and it became obvious pretty quickly as we were talking about how amazing this place is. Um, and I'll speak to that a little bit more, but I really want to thank you four guys in particular as we went through the process. Um, as President mentioned, uh, I got a lot of my family here. Uh, I want to first thank my wife. She's been my rock for uh, 13 years, and the coaching world is one uh, that's not easy on families. It's not easy raising little ones, and we got three of them. Jude, Van, and Zoe are, have been right there with us for, for a good majority of it, so excited that they're here with us too. And then my mom and dad and all my siblings are here as well, so um, I'm one of six, and, and, and even Aaron, what's up, dude? Haven't seen you. Uh, <laughs> even, he, uh, BYU alum, I might add. So he, he's here, Meg, hey, um, and my, a couple of my, my nieces, too. So it's a really special day for our family, and uh, we certainly don't take it lightly. So I also want to thank a few other people that, that have been really instrumental in, in, in me getting here. Um, you know, James Jones and Matt Ishpew with the Phoenix Suns and Coach Vogel, who I'm working for now, Monty Williams, who's been a huge mentor of mine and is uh, an outstanding guy. And funny enough, opened up every meeting with an opening prayer. True story for the last couple of years in Phoenix, so pretty used to that. Um, Brett Brown, who hired me in Philadelphia, is one of my greatest mentors. Um, and a couple of people that got me to Utah in the first place, Brian Anderson and Joe Brown. Um, Coach Hunsaker at Utah Valley, who I worked for, and then uh, so many other people that I can get to, but I, de I definitely want to shout that group out. Um, where I really want to start this thing with is the players, okay? You guys were the first ones I, I saw when I got into this building. The, the things that you guys were able to, I just told all of them so in the locker room, the things you guys were able to accomplish first year in the Big 12, absolutely remarkable. Um, Cannot wait to have every one of you guys back in a BYU uniform and get to it. That was one. Yes, let's get that up. Uh, and so that, make no mistake about it, that's my first priority is, is those guys. And, and I can't, I've already started building relationships with those guys. And um, we're going to take that part of it to a, to a whole nother level. That's, if, any, if I've learned anything in the NBA, it's, it's about, this whole thing is about relationships. I've been able to build some with some of the best players in the world. I'm currently still working with those guys and hoping to take them to, to somewhere they haven't been yet um, in this playoff run. But that's what it's all about is those relationships. So those guys heard me talk about it a few minutes ago and look forward to that. Um, with that being said, 
this is a new challenge for me. You know, I've been I've been on a different side of basketball all of my career, and I, as I went through the process, um, getting to this decision, the, the excitement I had for the new challenge at hand in terms of transitioning to the college world, coming from the world I was in, got me extremely excited the more I started to wrap my head around what that looks like. And the thing that really moved the needle for me and my wife was the environment that we're going to be doing it in here at BYU. What this university stands for, what the mission of this university is. Um, I'm a lifelong member of the church. Um, so to be able to do what I love at the highest level from a career standpoint and blend that with my faith and being able to do it with my wife and my three little ones, that's why we came here, okay? And that's why we came here. <clears throat> And uh, that's really special. So on top of that, man, the thing that's blown me away um, is just the level of support from the athletic department, from the university, from many people, the resources that, that this place has, the fact that it's in the Big 12, the highest level of college basketball. Um, there, there was a lot of things that played a role into me coming here, and that was one of the big ones. Uh, just a couple other things I wanted to hit on before we, before we <clears throat> move on to some of the questions was, I just want to make it clear that I, I coming from my background and talking to, to the players, you know, a lot of guys have, not a lot, all of them have ambition to play in the NBA. And I think with my background, we're going to build, we're going to, this, this, is, this is an amazing place, has been for a long time. What I want to do to take it to the next level is make this place the best place in college basketball to prepare young men to play in the NBA. And I think with my background, I think we're going to be able to get that done, and I really look forward to doing that. Uh, and the, what I've also learned really quickly is because of the history of this school and this program and what you guys have been able to accomplish long before I showed up, addi in addition with the resources, in addition to uh, what the reputation of this school is, players want to play here. I've, I've learned that quickly. Players want to play here and coaches want to coach here. And I'm in the process now of putting together a staff, talking to a lot of different people. This is a very desirable place to be. I look forward to teaming up with a lot of elite people that we're going to get in here to do this thing together. And uh, with that, let's go Cougs. Mike Chip. Uh, at this time, we'll open things up for questions from the media for Coach Young. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a question. We'll bring the microphone to you. Please stand, state your name, and your news outlet. Uh, Patrick and Ann, KSL. Uh, was it a hard decision to come here knowing that uh, maybe, at least for a temporary season or so, that, uh, and when I say season, I don't mean literal, I mean a time of life, that the NBA dream of being a head coach might be put on hold? No, not really. Once, we, once I realized how special this place was, um, you know, it, it became easier and easier, to be honest with you. Um, and when I'm, you know, I've known a lot of, a lot of these guys, Tom and, and Brian, like he said, we go back um, some years. But when, um, when President Reese and Keith came down and we, and we were talking, um, that moved the needle quite heavily for me, to be honest with you. As, as it relates to the NBA, and, and the dream and so forth. Truth be told, it's never actually really been my dream to be a head coach in the NBA. I love basketball. I love working with young players. I love developing players. I love building relationships. And to, again, to be able to do all those things at a place that has the, the, the family atmosphere that I so desired for my kids and my wife to be around, it really, it actually became a really easy choice. John Kuhn, Associated Press. Um, you know, BYU's had a traditional last couple of years of, of having kind of wide open offense, emphasis on three point shooting. What, what's your philosophy in terms of offense and defense that you plan to bring to BYU? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been a kind of my, my label, I, so to speak, in the NBA world has been, you know, I've run the offense of every team that I've, I've been a part of, and a lot of that's been based around, you know, where the NBA shifted to, which is kind of how BYU started, has played over the last couple of years, 
fast pace, getting up and down, spreading the floor out, you know, five out, read and react. So there's going to be a lot of that. You know, I was encourage, encouraging our guys to, you know, watch this this uh, series of the Suns and the and the uh, T Wolves to kind of take notes on how we're doing some things there. Um, so there'll be some similarities with teams I've coached in the NBA for sure. But you know, I think I'm a, I'm a modern thinker of the game. I want to push the envelope and um, analytically push the envelope. You know, with shooting threes, as you mentioned, and defensively, that's why I get really excited because I've been able on the offensive side so long in the NBA. You know, you have you you see how elite defenses guard certain things, and I've been able to put together a pretty um, extensive defensive background that, with the rules in college, obviously being different. Um, I look forward to being able to scheme and and get creative here on that side of the ball as well. Jared Lloyd, Daily Herald. The college game may be closer to the professional game than it's ever been at this point, but it's still different. What's it like? What do you think it's going to be like to adapt to the challenges of NIL, transfer portal, all of those elements that, that are a little different in the college world than they are in the NBA world? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's that, what you just spoke on the last bit there is the, the biggest difference. The big thing for me there is, number one, great support here in terms of administration, um, how things are run here. That put me at I was scared of that, to be honest with you, still am. But um, being able to rely on the people that are here, and then that's the huge priority to me with the staff is having people that I, I can surround myself with that have an amazing grasp on that, but not just a grasp on it, that are elite at, at navigating those waters that can really help me uh, do what I'm, I think I'm best at. Hi, I'm Greg Rubel. I'm your radio play-by-play -play guy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, you were part of a couple of college coaching staffs. What excites you most about being back in the college game generally and about being at BYU specifically? So some of you guys know, might know some of my history, maybe not. Um, I, so it's not going to be the first time I've, I've lived in the area. Uh, I coached for the Utah Flash, which was the old minor league of the Jazz. I lived, in fact, I lived in BYU housing and met my wife while she was a student at BYU. Um, so I'm familiar with everything that's going on around here. And I, when I was doing it, that was during the Jimmers era here. I remember coming to an, a game here, I believe it was against Wake Forest. And that was my first time ever coming to a game here. And uh, that was the most incredible atmosphere I'd been in at the college level. And so that's what excites me, the passion, the it's crazy in here. I mean, the hype video had me hype. I was ready to get these guys running suicides and get to it right now. but. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's just different. So for my kids, they're, you know, my family, my boys and, and my daughter Zoe, you know, they're, they haven't experienced that, that passion, really. The NBA, you get it some, but not, not like it, it, it is here. So that's probably the thing that excites me the most is just the overall passion that this place has. Matt Biamonte, KSL News Radio. How do you plan on juggling finishing up with the Phoenix Suns and get, getting started here at BYU? Fantastic question. It's a... Uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge, but I look forward to it um, because a lot of special things that and relationships I have with those guys down at Phoenix. A um, couple of them I've been with for four years and two wins away from winning an uh, NBA championship with, with Book in particular. Uh, he's kind of the main guy left from that crew, so I'm, I'm invested in, in, in those guys. Um, but in terms of how I plan on juggling, the staffing piece is huge. You know, I've been. Um, working tirelessly on that my phone's been i've been on the phone more in the last 24 hours than i have in fact kalani almost body slammed me because he's like bro i texted you what's up and uh <laughs> so <laughs> but uh he, know, he knows he knows how it is but uh that's my first outside of these players man that's my first matter of business is getting getting a staff put together that can hold the fort down but at the same time i think it's a really unique experience to tell the next chapter of BYU story um, in terms of leveraging my, this playoff run that hopefully we're on both for our players, for our fans, for recruits, for all that stuff. And it, I think it's a, a really a separator, I believe. Jake has the KSL Sports Zone. Building off Matt's question, how are you going to adapt to recruiting? Because you haven't had to do that in 15 years in the NBA. Yep. You know, it's, it's, what I'm learning is it's actually starting to trend to more similar to the way that the NBA 
works as I'm learning the ins and outs of it. But again, leveraging relationships. Man, I've been coaching for almost 20 years. I know people at every level. Um, it's been amazing to just kind of have a reminder of how big you know my network actually is. Um, and again, relationships in this business are the most uh, of the utmost importance, both with the players and with the the people that on the grassroots front, agents, coaches, the whole nine yards. So. My own personal network, but the staff piece is enormous there. I'm going to surround myself with people that that's what they're elite at, and uh, that's what's going to help us the most. Darnell Dixon, Daily Herald. Can you take us through the timeline of when you became aware that the job was open and then your interaction with Tom and Brian getting to this point? That would be a great movie, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Honestly, at this point, all the days are running together, so I don't remember exactly how things went down. But um, just to be transparent, I was I was making the interview circuit in the NBA on some head coaching fronts, and uh, all all the while we had a six or seven day road trip with the Suns. So I would break off from them and go have meetings with executives and owners, and then fly back and meet the team, and and so forth. So I was already juggling a lot. And then right when I landed from one of those meetings, I had gotten a, I had gotten word of of you know Coach Pope leaving in Kentucky, which tremendous opportunity for him. And shortly after that, my phone rang, um, and then just wildfire happened after that. To be honest with you, so. I was juggling a lot, me and my wife. The tricky part, honestly, was her and I weren't together. I was on the road. We was in L.A., SAC, Minnesota, and we were trying to make maybe arguably the most, the biggest decision of our lives. And so I was trying to tell everyone involved, man, I just got to get home. I just got to get home to my wife. I got to look at her in the eyes, and we got to talk this thing through. And uh, it's been a wild ride, but, uh, you know, we obviously landed in an amazing place. Coach, uh, Dave McCann from BYU TV and the Deseret News, congratulations and welcome. I want to follow up on that just a moment. Can you take us to that first conversation with your wife when you told her that BYU called and how that played out? And then also when you go back to the Suns, have they seen you with a cleanly shaven face where you have to reintroduce yourself? So I'll start there. So uh, I walked into practice. So we had practice this morning in Phoenix, so we're getting ready for the playoffs, as I keep saying. But... Uh, no, they hadn't actually. So I walked in there and all the guys were kind of looking at me, you know, and uh, we had a good laugh about it. But uh, funny enough with that, my wife's been wanting me to shave for like 13 years. So the fact that uh, here it is, so she's happy about that. But um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, her first reaction, though, uh, a lot of emotion. And I actually, I'm actually going to take you past her first emotion. Um, I was, we were in midair actually, I was flying from SAC to go to Minnesota actually, and she sent me a really long text that let me know, you know, how she felt about everything that we had going on that was really impactful for me, and uh, she's, she's as excited or more um, about this opportunity than I am, but she had a major, major influence on me coming here and what it would do for our family life. and. Uh, She's, she's amazing. Love you, babe. Thanks for everything. And uh, Cougar Nation, I honestly wouldn't be here if she, uh, she was in the mix. So. Jay Drew, Deseret News. Kevin, uh, when did you first decide that you wanted to be a coach and to be in the, this profession? And when did it first cross your mind the possibility existed that you could be the coach of BYU? So I was really lucky as a player. I always had really good coaches. Um, the whole reason I wanted to be a coach was uh, my high school coach, Roger Quam, who I should have shouted out at the beginning. So, Coach, I apologize for that. But um, he, yeah, he's had probably the most. Imp he's been the most impactful person on my on my life uh, as a youngster when I was in high school, and um, I wanted to be like him. He had a great life. He had five kids, and he coached basketball and taught PE every day. And I was like, that seems pretty cool. And so uh, I, that's what I want. I wanted to be just like him. And then uh, I got in. I played in, in college and jumped right into coaching. And, you know, one thing led to another that took me to a different path. But in terms of ever thinking I could be a coach at BYU, um, you know, got connected with, with Brian and Tom um, about four or five years ago uh, through a mutual connection when I was out in Philadelphia. And 
you know, kind of some seeds were planted. And in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe one day that's something that would, that would happen. And never in a million years thought it would happen at the timeline that it did. But, you know, I'm a firm believer that everything truly does happen for a reason. And uh, it's, it's amazing how everything lined up for it to happen right now. All right, we have one more question for you, Coach. Okay. Hi, and welcome to BYU, Coach. My name is Olivia Allen, and I'm one of the co-ROCK presidents for this upcoming year, and we are absolutely stoked that you are here. The ROCK is considered by many to be the best student section in the nation. How excited are you to have them behind you this upcoming season? Well, well first of all, thank you for the question, and I look forward to getting to know all the, all the students here on campus as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled about it for my, my kids, honestly, so they can feel what it's going to be like in here, how loud it's going to get in here, the passion that everybody has. Um, you know, I've coached a couple. I've coached a couple players that have played at Duke, that I hear maybe might rival the fans here. So I want to be able to rub it in those guys' faces <laughs> about how much better this place is than that place. So. All right, thanks, Coach. Let's give one more round of applause for uh, for Kevin Young. Thank you. An official welcome for Kevin Young, the new men's basketball coach at Brigham Young University. Those at the Marriott Center on their feet. He's now greeting his wife, Melissa, and his three kids, who clearly were such an instrumental part in why he chose BYU. And it's very clear, Jerem, that he wanted a lifestyle change, one that is more accommodating, spending more time with his family and kids compared to the grind that is the NBA season. He's hugging his mom and dad as well. All his siblings here, he's uh, one of six kids, five boys, uh, Danny Ainge in the house, Eric Mika in the house, notably Dallin Hall in the house, who's in the transfer portal right Love now. Love that. We were hoping comes back to uh, BYU. Um, yeah, Jude Van Zoe, great stuff from Kevin there. We got a, a pretty comprehensive look at kind yeah. of on and off the court of kind of who and what he wants. And uh, excited to have him, man. Let's go ahead and continue our in-depth coverage. A one-on-one -on -one now as Coach Young is with Jason Shepard. Coach, uh, congratulations and welcome to BYU. I, I know fans are thrilled that you're here and will be coaching this new basketball team. And I know the last couple of days have been crazy. Can you put into words what the last 48 hours or more have been like for you and your family? Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Um, the level of excitement in, our, in the young household is off the charts. The thing for me that was amazing was just to see the look on my, my 10 year old's uh, face when I told him what we were doing. He was super excited. Um, the, the amount of communication with my, just my network of people, my phone, I've literally been on the phone every waking hour. It's been pretty cool. When you think about the opportunity that you and your family have, what made this opportunity the right one for you? Um, just the, the family atmosphere, honestly, and, and the, the, the mission of the school tied in with being able to, you know, coach at the, at the highest level of college basketball. It just, it just felt like the, most, the best fit for our family at this time, and uh, it, we just couldn't fight that feeling. You mentioned during your, your press conference that you've heard from a lot of people. You've got a lot of current players, a lot of former players, coaches, you know, people that are very influential with BYU basketball here to support you tonight. What does something like that mean to you to have them here to support you? Yeah, it's honestly, it's overwhelming. You know, the history that this place has, so many good players that have come through here. Uh, it's very, honestly, it's humbling to just, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm just a, a guy that's kind of made my way through the ranks of coaching and to be able to have this much support is a humbling experience. I think a lot of people are curious as to why you're in the NBA now. Why go from the NBA to college? Because a lot of people think you go from college to the NBA. So why was why was this decision right? You know, timing in life is, is everything. And, uh, you know, the, the, the NBA is great. There's a, a lot of amazing players, but you know, it's a it's a hard lifestyle. It's there's not a lot of stability in it. And you know, as a dad of, of three young children and a wife that's been doing this with me forever, you know, as the more we got to, you know, took it to the drawing board, we just felt like we really felt like it was the best of three worlds. One, we could coach at an extremely high level. Two, we get to be as a be together as a family a bit more. And then three, like I said, we get to do it all with the backing and of the of the school and in the church and and the, and 
that fits our, our belief system, and it was just an amazing fit. What type of communication have you been able to have with current players, and what was the message that you wanted to get across to them? Yeah, uh, it's been, well, first of all, I've, the level of communication has been awesome. I've talked to all the guys. I've met with, I've FaceTimed with the whole group. I just met them all in the locker room. I've been on the phone with basically all of them over the last couple of days. The, 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 the main message is I want those guys here. They're a good basketball team together. The thing that has made, been made to me very obvious with the group is they like each other. They have a great, a great camaraderie with one another, and you can tell why they were good. And so I'm trying to share with them kind of what my vision is going to look like. It's tough on them because they obviously don't know me, but I'm trying really hard to expedite those relationships and make them feel as comfortable as they can. You mentioned during the press conference that, you know, during this transition that you're, you're going to rely heavily on your staff, which you're still trying to put together. Where do things stand with that? Do you, do you have a, like a timeline that you would like to get it done or is you want to make sure you get the right guys and that'll happen when it happens? No, it's a combination of both. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm down the road with uh, a couple guys, but the, the big thing is getting the right people in here. That's what I told the players. I want guys in here that are going to help get them better, um, that are going to develop them. And, you know, I don't want to rush it, but at the same time, I, I, we need boots on the ground. There's no question about it. So, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of coaches that want to come team up with us here. I, they, I think they understand what we're going to build on what's already been done here. We talked about the support that you're seeing from some of the current players and whatnot here in Provo, but over the last 24 hours, we've heard a lot of things from Frank Vogel and Devin Booker today was talking about you, and I know you guys are close. I know you're close with Chris Paul. W what have those relationships meant to you, and what can those continue to mean to you as the head coach of BYU? Yeah, I mean, the NBA, as we've mentioned before, it's a great league, but the, I'm not, I'm not going to miss much other than the relationships, honestly. You know, to be able to forge that tightness of a uh, that tight of a relationship, excuse me, with that level of player. I mean, we're talking about like Hall of Fame level players, perennial All Stars. So to be able to have the relationships I have with those guys is something that I'll miss in terms of the day to day. But you know, books are he's ready to come up and work out with the guys <laughs> this summer. Um, you know, we'll get him up here to hang, and it's, it's really been cool because you know Chris Paul is actually one of the first guys that called me. He's like. I mean, I'm, I'm coming to BYU. I don't know when, but I'm going to be up there checking you guys out. So, man, that's that honestly was uh, has been some of the most rewarding things that have happened in this whole thing. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations once again, and we look forward to working with you uh, over the coming seasons. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Jason, and our thanks to Coach Young. How wild is it to think about Chris Paul and Devin Booker hanging out in the Marriott Center Annex, working out with BYU's basketball team. Dwayne Wade has before. Um, that, that'll be awesome. This guy is connected to the level that few are, right? He has close relationships. Interesting to see, hear him say a lot of things, as we'll recap in the next couple of minutes. We'll talk to Greg Rubel as well. Um, and how about, how about it wasn't actually a dream of mine to be an NBA head coach. He did interview the last couple of years for lots of different positions, Spencer, but ultimately this was an opportunity he wanted to take at this time. He could have passed this up and said no and been a head coach for more money and uh, a bigger opportunity in the NBA, but he wanted to mix faith and basketball. He clearly understands the mission of BYU as a member of the church. He understands the Big 12. He understands the roster. Um, he understands what college hoops is, and he understands what he doesn't know. He talked about, listen, I haven't been in recruiting, um, I'm, but I'm going to have great assistance. I'm going to figure it out. He's excited to attack opposing defenses. He's excited to put his offense into play here. Last year was great offensive showing. If BYU could approximate that with a guy like Kevin Young or even do better, that'd be awesome. But I, I'm really struck by why he wants to be here now. It was Bill Self after BYU won at Kansas this year that said, BYU plays an NBA style of basketball. It's a great approach. And hearing Coach Young talk about bringing some of those advanced elements to BYU makes me think that it, uh, yeah, there will be some different tweaks and, and nuances for sure, but it's so going to be it aggressive. Going. It's, it's going to be similar keep to what BYU is already doing. And how about when you get the president of the school, C. Shane Reese, gets up there and says, quote, through our interview process, it became infinitely clear very quickly that we had our man. A lot of people were like, man, they only interviewed one guy. If you know, you, you know. know. He was clearly the guy. His resume, his LinkedIn looks uh, amazing. I really liked what he said to the roster. He said, that's, that's my first priority is, is 
Can't wait to have every one of you guys back in a BYU uniform. He's talking to Dallin Hall. He's talking to Richie Saunders. He's talking to Ali Khalifa, frankly, too. We both think that Ali's probably moving on, but it'd be nice if he came back. He's also talking to Colin Chandler if Colin wanted to turn face and come back. Like that, cert- that door would be open, of course. But um, he, he, he wants th- to get in the, with this group soon. Yet, he's excited to continue to coach with the Suns because he's like, hey, let's get you guys checking out what we're doing, and then let's put that into play. Certainly, as we see Dave Rose, great to always see him, uh, with Marty Haas in the, in the Marriott Center, is this situation is, uh, yes, the Suns have guys like Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and Bradley Beal, who are certainly at a different level than the college guys are, but the principles of what you're doing offensively are going to be interesting. I'm going to watch every single Suns game. He told his Because guys. Kevin Young's our guy, and we're yes. going to see what he's doing. Also, watch the guys, as we, as we talked earlier with the Suns beat reporters, you see Danny Ainge, the goat in the house, is watch the, the Suns players come over and talk to Kevin Young. He has a unique relationship in-game with the guys coaching him. That relationship. He also talked about the crowd. Steve Cleveland there as well. It's a who's who in the Marriott Center tonight, which is really fun. What, what are we going to see uh, you know, from, from BYU in the Marriott Center in a new era? Kevin Young's excited. The Rock president... Uh, you know, went up and talked about it. His 10-year-old is super excited about this situation. Obviously, a private jet when you're a little kid today is really fun. But it, I, I like a, a lot of what I heard in this press conference from Kevin Young. So let's take a look. And he mentioned a number of his stops in his professional career yeah. at the full resume or the LinkedIn, to steal let, the let, words of Jeremy. Let Jeremy. me add before even this, Utah Valley for a year with Dick Hunsaker. Yep. He goes to Ireland and coaches a team. Then he comes back and gets with the Flash. Coaches the Flash from 2007 to 2011 in an assistant and then one-year head coaching role. He met his wife, Melissa, living in BYU housing at that time. Went to the Wake Forest game in 2009, by the way. Jim was a sophomore. And then Nick Nurse gets a job in the NBA, and he takes over at the Iowa Energy. For three years as the head coach, again, G League programs, From there, he goes to the 87ers, which are the minor league team of the Philadelphia 76ers. Many of you are discovering that the 87ers existed. Assistant coach there, then became the head coach of the 87ers before he moved up to the big game and the big bench in the NBA. An assistant coach to Brett Brown with the 76ers between 2016 and 2020. It was in that time frame back in 2019 when he interviewed to become the head basketball coach at BYU When they ultimately decided on Mark Pope, that's when Kevin Young really became like a household name for the administration at BYU. He planted first interview in 2019. He mentioned that, too, that he was impressed uh, and thought, hey, maybe one day. Little did he know. Now he's the head guy, (laughs) goes to the Phoenix Suns and uh, tells his guys, hey, watch our team. Watch my offense and what we're going to do in the playoffs because we're going to use some of those elements. Absolutely. And those, those dynamics of my offense with Phoenix yeah. here at BYU. You see Trevin Nell talking with BYU Sports Information uh, Director Tyson Hutchins as well. Or not Tyson Hutchins, uh, Tyson Jacks. Yep. Um, hey, our boy Tyler Haas, Tyler somewhere in the Haas. house. Yeah. So uh, the important people have showed up to welcome yes, Kevin they have. Young adequately. Yes, they have. And I think the word that everybody mentions about Kevin Young and, and explaining his personality, and we've heard it like probably 30 times in the last 24 hours, is humility. And there is yeah. a noticeable genuineness to his approach. He, he's very kind of low-key in his yes. delivery. Uh, again, go back to 2005. I listened to a podcast yesterday that was very enlightening. When he's at Utah Valley, which, by the way, Utah Valley, the feeder to BYU right now for its last two head coaches. Wolverine's doing work is that in 0506 he was the lowest rung assistant on that team to where he was on the practice squad and he was actually the best player on the practice squad. So he would he was shooting a ton and he was playing so well that Dick Hunsaker's like maybe you ought to consider keep playing somewhere. And then he said, "I got you something in Ireland." He's like, "Oh, playing professionally." He's like, "No, coaching." So then he starts uh, you know, continuing that coaching trail. Then comes back to Utah with the Flash. <clears throat> and with the Flash, he is also low rung guy. He's literally driving guys from the airport 
to the hotel, playing the game, driving the opponents back. He's meeting Quinn Snyder. He's meeting players. He's meeting coaches. Building that network he that he referenced He said that was so valuable much. for him. But you talk about humility. This is a guy that, uh, you know, like 19 years ago was uh, in Orem uh, as a single dude trying to make tr – buying Subway sandwiches, selling pest control – sorry, security systems at, at night, buying a foot long that hopefully would last him a couple days. Now he's going to make upwards of four-ish million dollars, be the head coach of the BYU Cougars in the Big 12, and he has paid his dues. Like, there's – no one can say, I don't know why this guy got this job. It all makes sense because he has put his time in not only – Ireland, Utah Valley, the D League, now then the G League as it revamped, then the NBA for the last eight or nine years, mm. and he became an associate head coach with the Suns, who, by the way, went to the finals in 21, won 64 games the next year. This is not a low-level team. He's in the playoffs. One of the best this offenses in week, the NBA for the last they, three years. They play great offense. He knows stars. The fact that Devin Booker and uh, Chris Paul are going to come hang out in the annex, the Marriott Center at some point, this is a home run hire, and it wasn't just BYU people saying it. It was validated by other people, and hopefully that guy comes back to BYU. And I, I think certainly if I had, was uh, you know, uh, talking about what I thought the chances were, I would think that Dallin returns to BYU. I think it's fair that he's jumped into the portal just to see what's out there. But um, hopefully Dallin comes back to BYU because he should be the floor general for the Cougs next year. Sprayberry High School in Marietta, Georgia, is where he met his high school coach that he referenced as the reason that he wanted to get into coaching in the first place. And of note, Kevin Young was a high-level Division II college basketball player at Clayton State University. So save that one for uh, trivia down the road when it comes to Coach Young. But Sprayberry High School, Clayton State, he played, was a good player, and then got into coaching and hit those marks that you were just talking about. There's T.J. Haas, Tim Lacombe, as we uh, highlight more of the who's who in the Marriott Center. Joining us now in the Cougar Council Room in Studio B is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, who had an opportunity to ask Coach Young one of those questions on the mic there. What's up, Greg? Sprint it over. <laughs> <laughs> Catch your breath. And boy, are my arms tired. I have a little bit of a shine because I just ran over. But, hey, so, uh, yeah. Did you go up the stairs or out the well, I came door. up the stairs. I got Ooh. the cardio in. By the way, Clayton State, nickname? The I, Lakers. Lakers. The Fighting Lakers. The Lakers. Lakers. Yeah, there, you there you go. The Clayton State Lakers. Of course I knew you would take it one more level. <laughs> That's what Greg does. That's what you do. Uh, what are your initial impressions of his introductory news conference? I love how one of the first things he did was address his guys. You know, and he said his first objective is to get these guys – back in BYU uniforms, get them all back together. You know, how that was really cool to hear and have so many of them actually there to hear it themselves. And he had just talked with them, which is also cool to know that they were there and already had a, they, they, you know, they, they'd met virtually, but now they got to have a face-to-face. -face. And uh, I thought he hit all the right notes. And it was cool to see uh, ex-coaches as well as uh, current and former alumni being able to chat with Steve Cleveland and, and Dave Rose and, and Tim Lacombe and, and talk to so many former players in just a few minutes we were over there. Um, it, and, and the word family came up a lot, right? Both the Kevin Young family and then the BYU family. And it was all uh, coming together tonight over at the Marriott Center. Colin Terry and Nick Robinson were there um, as yep. current assistants. Nate uh, Austin was there as well. Nate Austin, yep. yep. So it's a who's who, right? Um, what, what do you feel like he brings to the table that might be unique from previous head coaches, given his NBA background? Yeah, the network. He brought up the word network. He said even he is kind of astounded at how over 20 years, just how broad the network becomes and the different resources he can tap into to create a staff. And, and I, I don't want to make any kind of predictions or prognostications or, or set expectations of, of who they might be because I think in the end, it'll be a really eclectic group and a unique group to BYU's, uh, you know, maybe previous uh, staffs. And I think it's going to be uh, really interesting to see what he, what he pulls or where he pulls from to get that first group together. I'll go there. I'm hoping there's someone from his NBA connections, right? And f a former BYU guy and then someone who isn't a BYU guy. Obviously, uh, a diversity of staff would be yeah. great. But yeah. he is connected in a unique way. And I'm excited to see. And he talked about kind of his offensive uh, mindset, too, that perhaps it will pick up similar to where it was, Greg, which was a very efficient offense. Thank you. Well, it, it, it's been working that way in the NBA, uh, you know, for years, maybe predating the current trend in college basketball, uh, whether, you know, at, it's either at the rim or on the arc. It's kind of the way it's yep. been. And that's kind of how BYU played this year in a lot of ways. Um, so I, I think that's, that, that's something that he's well used to running. And uh, if it ain't broke, 
don't fix it. No, and it, worked, it worked really well for BYU this past year. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting dynamic because he is so invested in guys like Devin Booker and Bradley Beal and the Phoenix Suns, and he wants them to do well and wants to coach them well in the playoffs and everything they have going on there. But he, he said, we need boots on the ground here, which understandably is going to put things, what he hopes, into fast forward to find his assistant.